Hi guys, it's Sammy. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today in this video I was going to show you how I make over my glass jars. These are just um, like a taco sauce jar that I have here and I think this might have been jalapenos. But um, you know we accumulate so many jars and you just hate to throw them out. You could take them to the recycle bin but I did decide to go ahead and decorate these and I really love the way they turned out. It's super simple and so I was just going to show you how I do it. I wanted to start off by um, letting you know that it, when I very first did these, the first three that I did or four, I sprayed this uh, clear coat all over because I was thinking that it wouldn't stick to the glass, that the paint wouldn't stick to the glass. Well, I watched a couple of videos on it and come to find out it's really not necessary to spray that clear coat on. You can put your paint directly on the clear glass and it'll be just fine. Um, just as long as you spray your enamel or your clear coat afterwards, after you have it all decorated and everything, um, you know, like this, spray, I put a clear coat all over this and that way it won't come off. The first ones I did pink and I decided to go ahead and try a different color and this is just like I said Waverly chalk paint is what this is it's ivory but you can use any kind of paint that you would like I'm trying to avoid the threads as much as possible here you can always go with a damp cloth and wipe off the top there if you do get the threads I'm just doing a single layer here because I'm going to do two coats. You can use your paintbrush, you can use a sponge, just whatever you have. Now I'm going to do the lids. Do yourself a favor, I wanted to mention this, try to do thin layers on your jars because um, it'll dry so much quicker and you want it to completely dry before you put on your second coat. So I'm going to try to do this thin. Okay, I was a little out of frame on that earlier, I'm sorry about that, I'm trying to stay in frame here. I forgot to mention that um, you need to put some rubbing alcohol on the jar before you do paint it. You don't have to put the sealer on the outside before you paint it like I had done before, but you should use the alcohol and um, just you know rub alcohol on here on any smudges that you have, any oil that comes off of your fingers just to make sure that your paint sticks. I wanted to show you here, on these jars I used um, a napkin to decoupage and on these jars I'm going to use some wax paper. I think this is, well, this might be like rice paper. I'm not really sure. Um, I got it from Hobby Lobby and I just really liked the paper. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. So I cut, you know, the pieces out that I want to use on those jars. But um, back to this one, how I did this one here is you just take a napkin and you know usually they come in like two ply or three ply this one just has one and um, if it does have you know two or three plies you want to tear that apart and use the top ply only um, you can cut around whatever design you want or you can um, wet around the flower or whatever design you're going to use and tear it and that makes it look I don't know a little more raw if you do that um, but you just take your brush and dip it in water and let's say um, I want to use this one here and you just go around it and with water I don't think I'm in focus here I'm sorry about that but what I'm doing is just going around this napkin like this with water You guys, I'm getting a tripod. It should be in the mail tomorrow, and that way I'll be able to, um, it'll be better, you know, video. You'll be able to see it better. So I've wet all around here, and you just basically tear around it like this. Kind of 
restore that, but I'm trying to keep you in focus here and in frame. So you just tear around the edges like this. Okay, so there's your piece. I'll clean it up a little bit here. But uh, you would you put this on your jar like that, you know, and decoupage it on there. Um, this right here is just a stamp. It's just a stamper. And then I just, you know, put it in my, my ink pad and stamp it on the jar. Just like that. Okay, so we'll get that out of the way. And, oh, I guess I should show you also that when I distressed it to make it this antique distressed look, you just take some sandpaper and just kind of... Um, rub on the places that are standing out you know that you know that would look like if it was shook around a bit you know or whatever that it would be worn off on those edges so that's how I distressed those and I don't think I'm going to distress the white jars that I did but that's how I did this just to kind of give it an antique look and I almost feel like I should put some wax on here to antique it a little bit um, but I'm not sure about that. So anyway, uh, here are the jars that I did in white, and I did two coats. I have not put the clear coat on. I haven't sprayed that on. Um, but here's the paper that I got. Like I said, that's the back, I guess. I'm hoping that this is going to stick on just like the napkin that I used. So we're just gonna go ahead and give it a go. I'm gonna put uh, Mod Podge back here on the back. You can use whatever you want. I've just got this sponge here, and I've got just this Mod Podge that I got Mod Podge that I got from the Dollar Tree. Let me get something to put that on. I'm not going to put the glue directly on, and I call Mod Podge glue. This is basically just like you know Elmer's glue, school glue, or whatever, just kind of watered down. And if you don't have Mod Podge, that's what you can do: is just use your regular school glue. Um, and you know put just a dab of water in it and that will make your Mod Podge. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put it on the back of this rose paper. Wish me luck. I'm not going to put it directly on here. Um, as I was saying, I'm sorry, <laughs> I got sidetracked. I'm not going to put it directly on here because um, this chalk paint will come off. I haven't sprayed it with clear coat, so it will come off. I mean, if you um, get any water on there, that paint will just come right off. So I'm kind of thinking the same thing with my Mod Podge that I'm afraid that paint will come off. So let's just paint this. Oop, it's curling up here. It's okay. Putting a pretty good coat of glue on here okay let's see how we're gonna do this So far, so good. Just kind of rolling it out. Now they say that you could use plastic to kind of get the wrinkles out. So I'm just going to put this plastic bag on my hand and go over it and try to get any of the extra wrinkles out here. Um, there are quite a few on here. But I kind of like the wrinkle effect. Doesn't bother me too bad. I think that looks fantastic on the white. So that is pretty much glued on. Now I'm just going to go over the top of it with another layer of Mod Podge. Let's just go right over the top of it.
Okay, so this one, I'm just going to put this simple rose on the front, I think, like this. Make sure I have it on the right side. One side is a little bit darker. So I'm going to put that about in the middle there. And again, let's just brush on the Mod Podge. So I've got about two coats, uh, maybe three actually, of Mod Podge um, layered on these rose prints. So I'm going to go ahead, they're pretty much dry, I'm going to go ahead and take them outside to spray them with my clear coat. But um, at this point, if I wanted to distress these and make them, you know, antique -y looking, like I showed you before the, right here, how it kind of looks distressed, I would do it now. When you spray these with a clear coat, you want to make sure that you do a very light layer at a time because if you just spray that on there and you want a thick coat of it, this uh, paint will come right off. It'll just drip right off. Okay, so these have three coats of the um, clear matte finish spray. And um, I think that that should do pretty good. It should, you know, I wouldn't suggest putting these in the dishwasher or anything like that, but it should be okay to kind of, you know, take a wet, damp napkin or something like that and lightly um, clean it off. But now I'm going to put a little bit of something up on top here, and I can't really decide. I have um, this black lace that I could put on there, or I have this eyelash ribbon that I could put on there too. And I, can't, I think I'm going to go with that, and then I'll just tie it in a bow on the back. I know that these aren't everybody's cup of tea. Um, the pink ones that I made are just kind of more shabby chic look. Um, I like it all, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put this ribbon on. I almost like it better without the ribbon. But I'm just going to tie it in a bow so that whoever ends up with this can, you know, take it or leave it. You can take it off if you want to or leave it on. I wanted to show you that the angel that I did um, was basically just like one of these angels type of thing. They're not glass, but I mean if you dropped it, it would break. But that's kind of what it started out as. Um, it was pretty rough looking though. And I thrifted it of course. So um, I went ahead and painted her black just with some Dollar Tree chalk paint. And I think I probably did about three coats all together because I kept finding spots that I missed. And so I would just kind of, you know, cover that spot up and then do another coat. So anyway, she's gonna be included in the little package. So I think that'll be so pretty, you know, on sitting on somebody's dresser or in their restroom or wherever they want to put it. Um, I do apologize again for the video, you know, not being in frame a lot of the times. I am getting a tripod, like I said, so hopefully things will get better, you know, in that area. Um, this will be in my Etsy shop, and I'll put my link down below. I sure am glad you guys joined me today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and um, hopefully... It wasn't too confusing and I kind of you got a gist of how I did it. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.